Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses, Crazy Quilting and Beyond. My name is Lisa Boney and today we're going to create something beautiful. Stay tuned to see how we can take a few basic crazy quilting supplies and create a beautiful block with them. To make our block, we're going to use the supplies we covered in our basic crazy quilting supplies episode. You'll want some muslin, fabric scraps, thread, needle, scissors. You're also going to want a ruler, a pencil, and a six inch template that you can either make out of paper or you can use a plastic quilting ruler such as I've shown here, this OmniGrid ruler. I will be showing you how to make the six inch template in a later episode. So let's make a simple block. We're gonna make probably a six inch block and I'm gonna use some of those scrap fabrics we had out. I have a piece of scrap muslin. One of the reasons I like simple unbleached muslin is it has a looser weave and you can see how you can actually see through it a little bit, uh, which uh, means that it's gonna be a little easier to get the needle through. So when I'm, when I'm sewing with my needle, I'm not worrying about fighting that background fabric since we're gonna be going through multiple layers of fabrics. So I just want a square. This is just a scrap from something. I'm not even gonna measure it. It's roughly rectangular. So to make a square, I'm simply going to, I'm eyeballing a square, folding it diagonally, and I'm gonna just trim along with my scissors. That scrap I'll save for something else. So now I have a rough square. Look at this fun piece of birds. That's going to work really well with that assortment of embroidery thread that we had out earlier. And I could choose to use this in just one spot or I could use it in two or three spots. So when I look at this I see we have this pair of bluebirds, there's a wren, there's some finches, uh, maybe another wren. I think I'd like these bluebirds to sort of be the center. And so if I want to save these birds as much as possible, I'm going to cut evenly in between them. And I'm going to do the same up here, although I'm going to leave a little more room around the bluebirds. I think we'll go like so. So now I have this nice multi-sided block. I can put my bird sitting up straight, which works great, but you notice all my angles are not square. So I'm not gonna cut the other birds until I get to a spot where I think maybe I would use them. So now I wanna look, what other fabric did I have in this pile of scraps that would go well? This one's just gonna be a very simple block using the cottons out of the scrap bin. So here I'm just sorting fabrics, trying to figure out which ones look like they're going to go, and I'm also sorting them out by color groups, which makes it easier for me to decide which pieces I want to include on this particular project. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to piece this one by hand. I'm not going to use the sewing machine. I do have my little iron set up. You don't need a fancy iron. And to be truthful, I have, I have used my fingers to piece quite a bit. And I'll show you how I do that here in just a minute. But we have our kind of center piece down that we're gonna use as our focal point. And now I think what I would like to do, I, I will often lay a piece down. Let's see how that goes. And the idea is, is that we're gonna build from this. We're gonna just bring things out one at a time and see where we can go with it. So I'm going to start with this green one. I like the way it's going so far. I like how bright it is and I'm going to put it down there and I'm going to lay it. It's not ironed. I'm not going to worry about that. I have picked a needle out. It's one that's just a standard embroidery needle and I'm just pulling off a length of thread. So I'm just using one strand of thread and I'm going to pick it up 
now and I see where my edge is I'm just gonna do a running stitch I don't pin it or anything because it doesn't matter I'm gonna separate it out so I like to do a, a seam width that's anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch and I'm just doing a little running stitch along here and the more thread more stitches you put on your needle at a time the straighter your seam will be and if you have a hard time uh, figuring out how to stay in a straight line and not getting it crooked then all you need to do is take a pencil and a ruler or the edge of a book and all you need to do is draw a little line you're going to be on the inside it's not going to matter I would not use pen you don't want to have it leaking through but pencil marks never come off no matter how many times you wash it they'll fade but they never really quite go away so that's the only time I ever mark with pencil is when I'm doing this pretty fine um, or can be you can see they varied it doesn't make a big difference I'm just doing a little simple running stitch and I want to go all the way to the edge of that bottom piece the top one I'm not going to worry about going all the way to the end because we're going to be trimming some of that away here in a few minutes now if I was on the machine I would not be knotting my threads on this but I know with with a running stitch it tends to pull out a little bit easier so I'm just putting a simple knot taking my main scissors that's all I'm using for this project using my basic supplies I'm gonna put a knot in the end because otherwise I forget when I go to put the next piece on so now you can see that running stitch is just simple the stitches aren't particularly even they're even a little bit wavy along that line that's fine it's not gonna matter a whole lot remember we're gonna be adding embroidery and that also is gonna help down so now I fold it over and if I want to just do a finger press I actually take my my thumbnail and I just press hard along that seam and with cottons the beauty of the majority of them is that actually presses the seam really nice but the flatter I want my block to stay an iron can be a very helpful tool so I would put that in one of your not while not necessary it's a nice to have item so I'm going to take this over to the iron do a quick press on that seam and flatten it all out so now we can see how nice and flat that lies the piece is flattened out I can see everything and I generally don't trim off these ends until I have put the next piece on I think I would like to use this pink fabric next so originally I was putting it up here but it looks a little busy next to this bird so I think maybe I would like it down here better so to use it I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to line up, I'm still lining up with the edge of my original piece. And I want to bring it out. So I'm going to sew from here and I'm going to go all the way along here. I want to leave a little bit of extra um, just so that I have a little trim room to go. And especially when I'm sewing things down by hand. So now I'm going to turn it. Here's my edge, so I know I'm going to start right in there. I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it off there. And now I don't have too much bulk. So again, I can finger press just using my thumbnail. This is a little softer fabric, so it doesn't, doesn't press quite as firmly as that batik did, but it still does a nice job. Now this one, I do have a lot of bulk in that fabric, and so I probably am going to take some of that off here. Um, it's just too much, so I'm going to just cut in about the same line. It doesn't have to be quite even. Um, 
that's not going to matter so much. I think I'm going to come over here and put a fabric here. So I'd like to bring the green through. So I think maybe this is a good spot. So I have to decide, do I want green and blue? Or green, you know, where it's a little bit different? Or do I want to pull that pink through? And I think that I want to pull that pink through. So let's put that one here. And here we go. So now we're just stitching this next piece down. And then we're going to play with some fabric ideas, trying to see what fits in the different places. Just trying out ideas. This is the fun part. It takes me a while. I try lots of different things. Uh, it's kind of fun to see what all the possibilities are. You can see kind of my thought process here as I'm pointing and thinking about things as we go. And ultimately, I decided to change things up just a little bit. We've still got our, our wren. What if we bring that wren in and put it here? It might not be sitting up quite straight, but I think it will still work well if we put it up in here somewhere. So I think before this piece goes in, this one needs to go in and maybe we're going to try and line it up with that so that then we can come with this and not lose our bird. I like that one. I think that's the one I'm going to put in next. So this one, you'll notice I'm not matching up an edge here. I'm going to be stitching off in a completely different area and that's okay we're going to trim all that off and even though we're stitched down I'll trim that stitching but the second row of stitching will help hold it so I'm just going to start I've left a little bit of extra here so that I can have my edges match well Isn't this turning out to be a fun block? So I think the next one I'm going to add is this one. But I realize that I have this piece here, and I think I would like it to carry up. I want to be able to see that blue. So I'm going to just fold it back, and we're going to put this one in. I still want a little overlap, and that's going to work out almost perfectly. I'm going to work around that little spot. So I just pulled it back, popped a stitch, and there it is. And if I need to, I can take a little pin and pin that down for the time being, but I'm not going to stitch it down at this point. I certainly could go back and stitch it down, but I'm not going to on this particular occasion. So to keep track of where my block is at. If I'm working with minimal supplies, maybe I just have a basic ruler. And you just wanna measure and get an idea. Are we six inches wide? We're pretty close. You do wanna come a little bit beyond because you need some room to sew it together into whatever the finished project will be. So I still have a little bit of ways to go um, before we get there. So the ruler can work well. It's sometimes a little harder to square it up. You can use, you know, any kind of a ruler, um, clear plastic one, whatever you happen to have. A, a sewing tape measure will work. So let's come back to this. I'm going to press this crease out of this fabric because it's going to be hard to figure out exactly where it lays until I go. And I think this is a good time to just take the iron and give my whole block a little press. So I'm going to do that very quickly. Okay, so now we're pressed out. maximize this yellow fabric. I think we're going to bring it back out right in there. And 
And there's where we're going to go. And so then when we come in with this one, and then bring it all the way across. I'm finger pressing this because this seam is not going to be straight on this fabric. It's actually going to angle off a little bit trying to preserve the head of that little bird. I don't really want to cut his face off. So there we have about where we're going to put that. But I need to get this one sewn down first. So I'm going to take that Put that in. It's time to stitch this bird down because otherwise I'm afraid I'm going to lose that. So I have that finger press here. It's hard to see on the video, but there's a little bit of a crease there. I am going to make sure I start my stitching there. go seeing that bird is just perfectly in line I'm really happy with how that turned out and we're gonna come up and decide where to bring this so I have this point and this point that needs to get covered up so I'm looking at this so we're gonna have this nice triangle of yellow here the pink pulling through which I like the blue pulling through and so when I do this I want to stay just that's my biggest point right there that I need to worry about and I'm going to just do the same thing just going to get started and stitch it right down. And you can see I got a little pucker right here where my seam wasn't quite straight. You know what? No worries. With crazy quilting, we're going to fold it over. We're going to press it down. I have a little gap there where that seam went, but I can fold it and get that nice and straight. And especially once I press it down, you will never know the difference. But look at this one, how that fabric almost disappeared completely. That's something I hadn't quite anticipated. So if I need to fill in with more, I think I'm going to add that fabric in down here if I need to square that block off. So one last little thing and we're almost done. press that to the side. We are almost done. Let me give this a quick press with the iron. There we are. So there is our block. Now it looks really wonky right now because it has all these gaps around the outside. But look, when we put this on here, I'm just going to use a regular pencil to mark this. This, what I'm going to mark, is going to actually end up ever so slightly outside of my stitching line when I assemble the blocks so I can use a pencil for it. I've positioned my template where I want it. I'm just going to run it along, mark a line. It, the line is going to be just ever so slightly away from the edge of the block. I'm holding the template down very tight and snug. 
Go over it a couple of times if you want. And now it's hard to see, but my line is there. And if I want, I can come back and use my thread and just baste a stitch right around that area. And, and these don't need to be fine stitches. They can be big fat stitches because all you're doing is holding the edges down, which will make it easier when you're doing your embroidery. And when I have a loose edge like this one here where we pinned it earlier, I wanna make sure I catch that edge down um, to help keep that piece of fabric from moving around. So just a big, big fat basting stitch. This will actually get pulled out more than likely when we go to assemble it with other blocks. So just a quick stitch, but it will make it very clear and easy to see as we stitch where our border or edge is. And it keeps those fabrics a little nicer and neater. And once I have it in, then I can come back and trim off all this extra fabric that's gonna be flapping around and getting in my way while I'm trying to do the embroidery on this block. I'm just going to square this up. I'm going to leave about half an inch of fabric, if there is that much, around the outside. That gives me, again, room to stitch it together. There. Voila. Now we have an, a crazy quilt block ready to go. The next step is going to be choosing our embroidery threads to use and getting going with some stitching. Thank you for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell to be notified of new episodes, give me a thumbs up down below, and I'd love to hear your comments or questions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Happy stitching. Let's go create something beautiful.